Thanks, guys, for coming. I will be go back and forth. I'm so short, so I will almost be hidden behind this, but uh, let's get going. Yeah, so we're going to talk about uh, field-level encryption, but in the context of multi-cloud. So how can we support that? Yes. So customers today that have a multi-cloud strategy, they need to manage how they deploy infrastructure as code. They do that maybe with Terraform, but what about encryption, encrypting data? If you have data in different cloud providers, how can you ensure to encrypt that data in a transparent way? So in this session, I'm going to talk about how that can be done using KMIP and you know, client-side field-level encryption, which is MongoDB's way of encrypting fields. Yeah? We're not going to dive deep into the specific of client-side field-level encryption. We're going to talk about KMIP specifically. You know, some short recap about that. So let's see if that works. Yeah. So should we care? Is really uh, companies or enterprises adopting multi-cloud strategies, or is it just something I'm stating here? Well, uh, HashiCorp has actually done a survey. They do that every year. And they're seeing that 60% of small businesses is actually adopting multi-cloud, yeah? So this is something that's are here to stay. And we're also seeing that 50, well, no, let's see, 76 actually percent of that is mid-sized companies. And about 90%, even large enterprises have 90% of that. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work, no. So this is something that I'm not stating. It's from another party, yeah, HashiCorp. So before I continue, so how many of you are adopting a multi-cloud strategy using more than one cloud? Yeah. So do you agree? If you agree, do you have an, a complexity in managing data, encrypting data in a multi-cloud, or you don't have that? If you have that, please raise your hand. Oh, OK, that's not that many. Interesting, I would like to talk to you after a session and see what you are doing that solves that. Maybe you have a solution already that I don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the agenda for today, we're going to talk about encryption of today. What do we have and what are the gaps? We're going to talk about client-side field of encryption in using that with KMIP. And then we're also going to talk about, uh, so I jumped it, sorry, about key management options. Yeah, what are, what are available? We have the local key, we have the KMS, and then we have KMIP. And then I'm going to do a demo uh, about that. And if there is time, some questions and answers, frequently asked questions from you guys. Um, see. So encryption is proven, but there are actually gaps. What are those gaps? So let's look at what we have today. Uh, so we have, you know, when you have data in transit, you encrypt that with TLS encryption. But as soon as the data is loaded into memory, it's actually in clear text. So when it's in use, it will be in clear text. So that's not covered. So what about at, you know, when you're storing data at disk? Then you probably have volume encryption, but you have your bring your own key, maybe you have storage encryption. All of that can be done, yes? But as soon again you are loading the data into memory, it's in clear text, yeah? So what can we do? What can we do here? So what should we do when we have the memory in clear text in memory? How can we solve that? And if we don't solve it, what are the issues with that? So if we don't solve it, let me see. Here. This clicker was really bad. <laughs> yeah, this is, I need to buy one on home, yeah. So if you load it into memory, then, and the data is in clear text, that means that it's actually vulnerable, yeah? You can dump that data. You can do process scraping, RAM inspection, and just dump the data and read the data. So what we are trying to do here with MongoDB is trying to solve that gap, yeah. So no database actually has that capability today. And we're also releasing a lot of good features. If you go to the session tomorrow, you will learn more about encryption. Uh, I don't want to give you a spoiler, so you can go to that session tomorrow. But the next generation of field level encryption is going to be even more comprehensive. So what have we MongoDB do, have to do to solve this? So let's look at how you could do it. Maybe this is why I didn't get that many hands up here before. So application, you could use application level encryption. This means that you're encrypting the data yourself on the client side. So if you look at these fields, you have three PII fields, social security number, email, and mobile. And you want to encrypt those fields. So what you could do is to, in your application code, add logic that encrypts those fields, yes, before it's sent to the database. This means that you're actually cluttering down your code. You're changing your logic to be able to support this. It's nothing done as a configuration. It's actually code changes that you're doing in your application to be able to support this, which means that 
if you have encrypted data, the logic will, the logic will look different, the programming lines will do, look different than if you don't have, yeah? So you're actually in introducing complexity in your code. And what are those complexities that we're seeing? Well, let me check that. So it's highly complex, as I mentioned. You see, we are seeing that customers who do this on their own using application level encryption are seeing about 50% overhead in developing and you know, managing that because you need to think about cryptographic, how you manage the keys, renewing the keys. There are a lot of complexities in doing that. Uh, the other thing uh, is about it limits the application capabilities. So you probably cannot query the data. You can query the blob, yeah? but you cannot query the data the way you want, maybe doing uh, equality matches and such. Yeah? That's not possible. And the other thing is it compromises the user experience. What's, what does that mean? Well, if you're cluttering down your code with additional lines to encrypt and decrypt the fields, you're actually adding more complexity, but it also probably will hit the performance. Yeah? It will give you bad performance, and this is what we've been seeing. Instead of using an optimized driver like the MongoDB driver that manages that, that's for you. Yeah? So what can we do? We are stuck between a rock, and that, that's a great expression yeah, in English. We are stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what can we do? You can do either nothing, you can you know, keep not encrypting the fields. Yeah. You can just store it as it is. But if the data, you get a data breach, you will actually, you can just dump the data. Yeah. You're more vulnerable for a data breach. Or you can actually implement application level encryption. And this means that you're actually doing what I just talked about, yeah. adding that complexity in your application code. It gives you a lot of friction in your development process and it doesn't really give you much value because you cannot query the data that you want. It's a dumb blob store. Yeah? So before I continue, is any one of you using application level encryption today, the way I describe it? So, yeah, okay. Uh, do you agree with my <laughs> statement or is it just gibberish? Some of it, okay, yeah, cool. So let's see how can MongoDB help you guys? You know, how can MongoDB help you to remove that complexity in doing application level encryption? So MongoDB has something called client-side field level encryption, which means that you can, just configure what fields you need to encrypt, you provide the encryption key, and then you're ready to go. You don't change anything in your code. This is the only thing you do is the connection string and the configuration, yes. So your insert statement, your uh, find statements, all your queries will be exactly the same, regardless of its client field level enabled or if it's not. And this is really important. It you know, reduces the cognitive load for your as the developer. So sensitive data never leaves the application and also data always remain, remains encrypted. You have the encryption key, nobody else can see that data, yeah? Because it's done on the client side. Um, again, no need to modify applications. We want to make it easy for you as a developer to focus what's business, you know, bringing business value and not just focusing on the nitty gritty details. Some of you may be like that, but you know, giving you the capability of doing stuff faster and uh, smoother, that's what we're trying to do here. And, when it comes to about the data, you know, if you have encrypting data, most often we are seeing, <coughs> if you're using application level encryption, the data got, gets dumb. You cannot actually query that doing equality matches. In MongoDB, we have something called deterministic algorithm and a randomized, randomized algorithm, which makes it possible for you guys to actually query and do equality match. And what's upcoming tomorrow is really good stuff. So if you are into encryption, you should go to the session. If you have a product release, we actually release it about how to actually do range queries uh, on, with randomized algorithms, yeah? Before that was not supported. We just supported deterministic way of doing matches, equality matches. And of course, uh, the, the, why, the way we have done it makes it really performant, yeah? We have built this into the MongoDB driver so you don't have to think about doing it yourself, you know, cluttering down your code and getting bad user experience. So, uh, of course, reducing the cognitive load, as I mentioned. I think that's a really important thing for you as a developer. So now we've talked about what client-side field level encryption is, uh, what the challenges are. So I want to set this now in the setting of uh, multi-clouds. So if you do this in a multi-cloud setting, what are the challenges? About? Well, how can you do that? How can you support that? So looking at the problem, so we have here uh, three different cloud providers, KMS, AWS KMS, uh, Azure Key Vault, and then yeah, Google Cameras. So if you have that, and you have applications deployed on these different uh, 
public cloud providers, or you maybe have data that's c uh, contained in all of these cloud providers. How do you manage the keys here if you want to encrypt the keys? Each of those cloud providers has different ways of encrypting, managing keys, yes, which makes it a bit complex if you want to, if you want to support all of these three cloud providers. And what about if you want to go from one cloud provider, let's see, to another cloud provider? So maybe you're starting out at AWS and then maybe your purchase department says, no, we think AWS is too expensive or whatever, and we want to move to another cloud provider. How would you do that? Well, you need to actually decrypt the data, yeah, and then store it again and encrypt the data in the target cloud provider, which makes it really you know, time consuming and it can be error prone also if you do it incorrectly, you can lose your data. The other aspect is if you have multiple clouds that's running, if you have one workload running in AWS, you have one running in GCP, and you're, you need to encrypt that data in both, both of those uh, clouds. How would you manage that? How would your application understand which key to use where? Again, would you need to build some kind of routing, routing lookup or lookup, key lookup functionality to manage that and to be able to understand which key to use where, yeah? It adds complexity to your way of you know, developing your application and increases the cognitive load. Uh, so yeah, so that's the actual problem statement. So what can we do then? Well, how can we help you guys to uh, resolve this issue? So let's look at the local keys. So MongoDB has a way of using local keys. This is our way of integrating with services that are not yet provided, like the secrets manager in AWS or other you know, external key management system. It's a bit, you could say, not production ready, I would say, it's testing. And then we have, let's see, the next one is coming. Yeah, and then we have the classic ones that you probably have been using, KMS, yeah? You have using Azure KMS, Azure Key Vault, AWS KMS. These are the proprietary protocols that you're using that you need to use the specific APIs. It's not a common standard, yeah? Which means that it's hard to migrate if you want to go from one key provider to another key provider. But then we have something called KMIP. I will probably, I've tried to say that word, interoperability, I cannot say it, so I will just say KMIP. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard word, yeah. But key management interoperability protocol, you see, I cannot say it yet. <laughs> so that's another way, it's a standard way of actually managing your keys, yeah. And there are different uh, software out there that actually provides that. And in today's session, I'm going to talk about HashiCorp Key Vault, which is, a KMIP enabled provider, yeah? So let's see. So what this does, it actually allows a centralized cloud agnostic key management system, yeah? So we can actually store the keys then, the key material then, the envelope key in HashiCorp Key Vault or if you have an in-house KMIP server, yeah? Which means that it's stored in one place. It has one unified API to create the key, rotate the key, and also encrypt and decrypt, yeah? instead of using the different cloud provider APIs, which makes it really complex and you know, in, uh, increases the cognitive load. Is anyone using HashiCorp Key Vault here? Yeah. Are you using KMIP also? Okay, cool. Okay, so that's the actual what we're trying to do with that. So when we use KMIP, we don't need to have a routing logic because we use one API, yeah? We use the KMIP API regardless of its HashiCorp Key Vault today, or if it's another provider. HashiCorp Key Vault is one, one software vendor that provides the KMIP endpoint, the KMIP standard, but there are of course others also. So you, can, you don't have to use HashiCorp Key Vault, you can use others also. But in this example, I'm going to demonstrate that with HashiCorp Key Vault. And then you have your in-house KMIP server. So this makes this, you know, the picture much simpler. You don't have all of these moving parts, and you can focus on using one API to manage your keys and rotate your keys. So let's look at what, what, how does client-side field level encryption works. So if you have your query on the left here, we have a query, and let's see, does it show? No. Yeah, we have a query, uh, a user executes a query, he wants to find the social security number 901, and 901-01001. What happens then? So that, well, the client then connects to the MongoDB driver, the MongoDB driver then will look up the KMIP enabled key. This is actually the envelope key, yeah? The envelope key is the key that's used to encrypt the data key, yeah? So we have two parts. Envelope is on the highest level, and the data key then is uh, decrypted, 
and used to encrypt the actual data, the, the field that you need to encrypt. So in this case, we want to encrypt social security number. The data key will be used to encrypt that field. Uh, let's see. So as I said, yeah, we get the key. The envelope key then encrypts the sensitive fields and uh, the data key. And then the driver then sends that as a ciphertext to MongoDB. So we are still in the cli client, you see. Before forwarder, we have not done anything on the server side. Everything done on the client side. This means that the database never knows your data. It's on your client, yeah? We don't have any clue of what that data is because we're encrypting it before we actually send it to the MongoDB driver. Uh, and then to the database. And that then will then return a document still in ciphertext because the database is storing the data in ciphertext. Yeah? We'll return that uh, document to MongoDB driver and the MongoDB driver then will use the key, the data keys, to decrypt the fields and return it to the client. Yeah? Uh, this is the process yeah, of doing it. So if, the, if you look at this picture and we see a KMIP, the same thing would be if it was like AWS KMAS here. Huh? We will just replace the KMIP with AWS KMAS. And me and my colleague Brandon here, will, uh, well, we are partners, we are going to have a talk about AWS KMAS tomorrow. So if you're open for that, you can come and watch that too also. Uh, so let's look at how we configure the uh, CSFLE. The first step is to configure our KMIP provider. In this case, it will be HashiCorp Key Vault. The next step would be to actually specify your certificates. Yeah, and the certificates are used to validate against the HashiCorp Key Vault server. Yeah? And then we have the next step, which is actually creating your data keys. And the data keys are those keys that are used to encrypt the fields. Yeah? On, and the actual data keys are then encrypted by the envelope key that's managed by the KMIP uh, endpoint. And then we have the JSON schema. Yeah? This is important. We have the keys. Yeah? We have the encryption keys, data key fields. But we need to also specify a schema. And the schema is telling MongoDB driver which are the fields that need to be encrypted or decrypted, yeah? And I will show you actually exactly how that looks. And then you just run your query. All of the things that you're seeing I'm doing here is external. It's not changing your application code. It's, this is what you do when you connect your database. So in your connection clause, you will have this setup, yeah? And run that as a base clause, yeah? And then you don't change any statements when it comes to inserts, updates, and that will be totally transparent. So it's just a session that enables it to be client's field level encryption enabled. Let's see here. Nice script, yeah. So again, step one. In my case, I'm using a, a HashiCorp Key Vault server that I'm running locally. You typically would run this in a VM in a maybe I don't know, virtual VM or somewhere you know where you have it, or VMs, you will run that. You could run it in the cloud also. And then I'm also specifying the next step. It's just, this is the certificates, yeah. This is the way it, you, you need to have to be able to authenticate against the KMIP server, the credentials. Then I create the encryption keys. And the encryption keys are then created in a collection in MongoDB. And those encryption keys are, again, then just revisit. I'm reiterating the same things, but you know it's good to have in the mantra. The keys are then encrypted by the envelope key. So the collection that I'm creating here when I do create data key is a MongoDB collection, but those keys are protected by the envelope key. Yeah? And then we specify the JSON schema. And this is the important part here, yeah? where you actually define which are the fields that you need to encrypt. So in this case, we have the schema, and we're saying the JSON type is an object, that's a document. And then we're saying properties. First name, last name should be just a string type. And then we're saying the social security number. And using the keyword encrypt here means that this field then, SSN, will be encrypted. And we're stating some additional information here. We're saying JSON type string, it's a string. We're saying what kind of algorithm it should use. It's using deterministic. We have another one called randomized. So when you use the deterministic, it means that you can do equality matches. And tomorrow you will hear more about the future where we actually support uh, randomized searches also. And then we have the key ID, which is the data key ID we just created, yeah. And this is all the things you need. And then you can just run your query. And if you look at this example, you know, usually what you do, you have the first part. You see the Mongo client here? If you don't have client-side field of encryption, you do Mongo client and your connection string, yeah? But now, we, because I want to have client-side field of encryption, I just add the last option here. And this means that your connection now is client-side field level encryption enabled. You don't do any other changes, yeah? You don't do any other changes in your code. 
you see the insert statement is still the same insert statement, regardless. Yeah? And this you can put in your base connection class when you're connecting to the database. So, so now the demo. So I'm not going to set up uh, a demo here. Let's see if that works. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So what I have done, this will be available in a GitHub repository. If you want to look at that, you can do that later. So I have created a Docker image where I've installed HashiCorp Key Vault uh, just to make it easier to, you know, demo it. Uh, I will start that Docker container now, and that Docker container will then start the HashiCorp Key Vault server. I will unseal some stuff. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, started the Docker container here. And now I'm starting the Key Vault server, which is a part of that image, Docker image. As you can see now, the HashiCorp Key Vault is started. And the next step is to actually unseal the Key Vault. Because if I don't unseal it, I cannot add additional endpoints, like the KMIP endpoint. Uh, so I'm unsealing it, and then I need to go to the console for HashiCorp Key Vault, log into the console. So I'm going to the console now. And as you can see now, I'm going to create a new endpoint. I'm going to create a KMIP endpoint. And the HashiCorp Key Vault KMIP is available in HashiCorp Enterprise, yes? So I've created that, and the next step is, let's do that first. So I've created the KMIP endpoint here. Uh, and then I need to create actually a scope. So I'm creating a MongoDB scope. And everything I'm doing here is, of course, documented at uh, HashiCorp's uh, website. Uh, and will be also documented in the GitHub repository. I've created the scope. And the next thing I need to do, look at some configuration. So I can specify which is the HashiCorp Key Vault endpoint server and my local host. I'm using 2048 because I'm using a TLS PEM certificate here. That needs to be that kind of uh, 2048 bits. The next thing I need to do is create the, uh, let me see here, yeah, the role. And the role is to be able to decide what I can do with the keys. Can I create new keys, you know, iterate, or create a new version of the key, remove a key, and such. So actions I can do on the key. And then I need to create the credentials. And the credentials are so I can actually connect to the HashiCorp Key Vault server to be able to, you know, uh, decrypt and encrypt the envelope key and the data keys. So I'm all over the place here. It seems like I'm a bee here. But <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm copying the certificates here that I've generated. Um, so I will do that. Um, and then I will paste that into the uh, Walt CA PEM file. Uh, and I need to do similar thing for the client. That I'm copying the certificate file and, and the private key. Yeah, let's do that. But in waiting here, I'm copying that. And the next step would be actually run this application to see what's happening. Yeah. So now it's configured everything. All of this configuration you do once. You don't do that, you know, it's in a base class you set it up. Once you have done that, you need to actually run something. So let's run an application to see if this is working. So I will go back to my readme here. And I will go to my application. I've created a Python application that does an insert of a person using my KMIP provider I just set up. Yeah. So this is the code. So first I'm doing a reset just to clean the database from scratch. And then I'm setting up the KMIP provider config here. So if I click on that, I can see that I'm using the KMIP provider. And I have a file called configuration, which is storing the, as you can see, that was similar to what I did in the deck. Yeah. I'm providing the endpoint, I'm providing the certificates, uh, and that's the configuration of the KME provider. And the next step is to actually configure the schema yeah? uh, and the keys. So here I'm cr creating the data keys. I have two data keys, one on key one, ID one and ID two. And these are the keys I will then refer to in the schema. Yeah. And again, this you just do once. I'm creating the schema here. Uh, configuring the schema, I'm saying that I want social security number to be encrypted. I also want mobile to be encrypted. As you can see, I'm using the encrypt keyword here. Um, I'm using the two different types of key. So I'm using key one and key two for the two different fields. So once that is done, I have configured now client-side field of encryption. Now I can do the insert. So all the steps here from one to three, uh, or one to four, sorry, are one, things you do once, yeah. And let's look at the insert statement here. Let's look at what I'm doing when I'm doing the insert here. 
So I'm creating a user here, and I need to create the client side field level options. So all of the configuration I did, I will provide that as a part of the session, the CSFLE options. And then you can see I'm just adding that, and the insert statement is same, regardless of this was a client side field level encrypted session or not. Yeah. And let's run it and see what happens. Now it's connecting to the database, and I'm actually inserting some stuff in the database. So if we look at the database here, this is Compass I'm using uh, to look at the data, the MongoDB tool, visualization tool. And you can see now the fields, a social security number, are asterisk, asterisk. So we actually showcase there. Using KMIP, we can encrypt the fields by just configuring schema and doing it on the fly. And easy for you as a developer. So with that said, that was a quick demo. Uh, we only have 30 minutes. I would like to do more, but uh, the sort of key, we have additional stuff upcoming that's really exciting, and it's about key rotation. So before, when we rotated the keys, uh, we could just, we didn't rotate all the CMK keys. Now we're actually upcoming. We can actually just rotate all the CMK keys. Not, not just the envelope key, but the also data keys, yes? We can rotate those with a single API call. Uh, and then we have something also upcoming, that's key migration, means, means that we can actually migrate keys. So if you're starting out in AWS and then you wanna go to GCP, how could you do that? We actually have also that upcoming, it's not yet released, but that will make it possible for we just one API call to do that change, yeah? Going from one cloud provider to another cloud provider, uh, or from KMIP to AWS, KMS, or whatever you need to do. So let's me, I have, how many, I think, yeah. And this will not impact your application. You don't have any downtime, yeah? yeah. So if you want to learn more about um, client-side field level encryption, there are, of course, white papers, but we have a lot of good documentation on our website, so you can go to. Um, and if you want to get started, there are also driver documentation for different uh, you know, major drivers out there. And as you can see, there was like a QR code for the GitHub repository that I will update uh, to this week, and you can get started. So. Yeah, do you have some time for questions or something? We have time for uh, maybe one question. Okay, sure. Thanks, you guys, for coming. Yeah, go ahead. So can you create index on the deterministic tree? Yes, you can. If you're using deterministic, so the question was, can you use indexes on encrypted fields? Yes, if you're using deterministic algorithm, you can do that. Yeah. Okay, that was what the question. Thanks. Thanks, guys.